Good morning. My name is Chris, but I'm also Jesus Christ. And I want to speak to you young guys and girls, anyone in general. First off, I want to tell you that I am a Trump supporter. I think I'm Trump support one, pretty much. And second off, I want to tell you that I believe that Donald Trump is God the Father himself. And, you know, I don't even believe it. I know that he is. And I want to reach out to you guys and, and have you, you know, hey, seek God. You may be young. You don't know if God is real. For me, I met the devil first. <clears throat> I was a meth head in a, in a tweaker garage doing a lot of meth. Didn't know if there was a God for sure, but I know that by the look in people's eyes, I could see there was a devil. I was like, they had evil looks in their eyes. I was tweaked out, staying up all night, you know, and I knew I was doing wrong. But something didn't feel right. There was like a void. So I, I went out, you know, this happened. I, I, I must have been 18 years old. I'm doing meth and, 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 uh, and I started doing meth when I was 15 or 16. But anyways, um, my story is kind of like, I, I started out as a kid. You know, people told me I was pretty smart, but I thought I was kind of dumb. Thought I was a dork, thought I was ugly, thought girls didn't like me. No one gave me the time of day. I tried to be cool. No one really, the kids in class would, would, would all say something. Some of the cool kids, for example, a guy named Wes. And everyone, yeah, cheer him on. And I tried, no matter what I said, people ignored me. I felt inferior. But I do remember this. From the earliest moment of being conscious of uh, of myself, of being a, a boy, I wanted a girlfriend. Uh, I can't even put words to it. If it was a girlfriend, a wife, or what? I wanted a girl. And I felt almost like I just had just come out of heaven. This must have been in kindergarten. So years go by. I actually had a crush on, on, on a Jewish girl named Julie when I was a little kid. But you know, I just had a crush on her. But anyways, so I'm going through life. I thought I was really dumb, but teachers were telling me I was smart. Still struggling in school. Felt like a dork. Kids picked on me. You know, I was a jerk sometimes to kids, but kids picked on me. Went through school, high school. Uh, I just get experimented and got in and, and start and smoked some pot. I started out with cigarettes, and and then in high school, you know, I started start off with cigarettes with you know my friend that I used to ride bodyboards with and you know later I became a surfer introduced me to cigarettes and and I smoked them and then next thing you know it was pot and uh I remember the first time I got stoned I just felt wow that was really crazy and you know we rode our skateboards from this we were at an elementary school hanging out in a jungle gym just stoned off our ass first time I ever did it and I remember us skateboarding down at McDonald's and the three of us there's a guy named Deva there's me and there's another guy named Dave we went down to McDonald's, we were skateboarding. I remember there's some girls on the way over there that we stopped to talk to. And for some reason, I wasn't afraid of them like normal because I was just so out of my mind. I don't know why, because I was always afraid of girls. We would go to McDonald's, we were just laughing our asses off while we are eating. But anyways, long story short, I get into meth. I, I become addicted, you know. I become addicted. By this time, you know, I have a, I have a girlfriend. I'm kind of insecure. I feel like I'm not good enough for her. I feel like she's going to cheat on me. I, I really liked her a lot, though. And, and maybe she, we kind of, she did cheat on me. I kind of cheated on her too, but you know, so insecurities. So age 18, I'm in this garage and, and I knew something wasn't right. Like I got to get out of here. Chris, you're doing drugs. You got to get out of here, Chris. And, and, and for the first time, cause I was seeing the devil in people's eyes. I'm like, is this, is this really real? And I remember in the morning leaving and just calling out to God. You know, I said, if the, I walked out, I left the garage, started walking home. And I said, if there is a God, talk to me. You know, I talked to him the first time. And that was that was 18 or so. Years go by, struggling. Um, my girlfriend and I break up very badly at, at age, I was 20 years old. Uh, I got broken so bad by how it ended because, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to say because she's, I don't want to damage her. I got injured severely bad and because of it, I turned gay. I was so injured that I turned gay, and I and, and I had uh, something called broken heart syndrome. I started having an arrhythmia a couple of times. I started sweating from the from chest pain, and then before too long, I thought I had schizophrenia. I marched in the, you know, a, a government agency's Orange County Mental Health in California, and said, "I think I have schizophrenia," because I because I feel like people can hear my thoughts, and I think my girlfriend was cheating on me. And the doctor said, well, everyone feels like that sometimes. And he drugged the fuck out of me and, and just drugged the fuck out of me. 
life goes on. I, I start drinking. I start drinking. I actually started drinking at 18. And my drinking became severe after this. I mean, liver failure at age 25. Liver failure at age 25, three times. I knew I needed to quit drinking. I mean, my drinking was, like, severe. I've taken a whole bunch of antipsychotic drugs, drinking a case of Budweiser every day. And then when my liver shut down, I was drinking, it must have been two fists of whiskey, Kessler's whiskey on top of it. And my liver shut down the third time. And for me, like, you know, this has been struggle. I've been known trying to get sober for a long, long time. I needed to, I was a drug addict and I was an alcoholic. And finally, like, because I thought someone put a hex on me because I had been hanging, when I was in that, in that garage doing meth, some of those people were devil worshippers that I was hanging out with. Remember, I'm Jesus Christ. But I hung out with them. I hung out with them. I don't know why. I guess because they offered me drugs and I was kind of friends with them. I kind of liked one of the guys. He was pretty, he was pretty cool, but he was not a good man. Anyway, so like, for me, after this, this, this liver thing, and it's a long story, there's tries and failures. I ended up going to a 12 step program and, and the 12 step program, I went in there cause I thought someone put a hex on me, Witches and warlocks were doing shit to me. I thought I was screwed. I thought the devil's going to get me. I kind of ran into 12 step program looking for God cause I didn't believe in Christianity. Church was not my thing. It wasn't raised on it. And I didn't believe in it. I kind of hated, hated Christians, hated church people, hated the concept of Jesus Christ. So I go into this 12-step program and, and you know, I sobered up and it got me off drugs for the final time for some reason. But I remember going to a meeting and I was insecure because people could hear my thoughts and I, I was insecure about my sexuality because I'd been hurt so bad. thought I was gay. Turns out I wasn't gay. I just got injured really bad and been lied to by the, the left-wing progressive movement such as Biden. Said, oh, you must be born gay. When you start believing that shit, they got you. But no, no one is gay, I'm telling you. Including you, including me. We're all gay, but none of us are gay. None of us are gay. So, like, they, I was in this meeting, and people were making fun of me, and I I, I just couldn't handle it. They are making fun of me openly, and I just about broke. I went home from that meeting and broke down in tears. Years goes by. I go back and forth from these 12 step programs, getting getting sober, getting drunk, getting sober, getting drunk, trying to find my way. Couldn't confess my story about thinking that I was gay. I couldn't I couldn't talk about it. I was afraid to tell people because I was like, if I told you this, you'd laugh at me, make fun of me, run me out of town. My worst fears would come true. Well, eventually I found a good a, <clears throat> a sponsor. His name was Dan L. And he was a good man. And I just knew that he was a good person. I respected him. I liked him, and I knew he was smart. I just liked the guy, and, and he was my first friend. And I started, I started calling him, doing what he told me to do. When he said, "If you want to get sober, call me every day," and, and uh, just call and check in, and I, I did it. And I remember the first, for the first time. I, I, I remember calling him one time because he bought me this book. He said, "Read this," and I read. It. I wanted to call him and just tell him, "Man, that book was cool." I felt so unworthy to even call him to tell him <laughs> that I liked him. I thought he was cool that I had a friend for the first time in a long time. He said, you have, you, there's nothing wrong with you calling me, man. And then that man was a Christian. I couldn't buy it. He helped me. He was the first person I confessed that I was gay to. And, and he told me, well, Chris, you're not gay. You, you just, don't you believe in Christianity? No, I don't. And remember, I'm Jesus Christ the entire time. Didn't know it. It was years go by, I struggle and struggle and struggle. Fall in love with prostitutes. Rehashing old wounds. Not that I was with them, but I, I fall in love with some girl. I think she's going to be perfect for me. Find out she's a prostitute and I shatter all over again. It was years go by, struggling in and out of these 12 step programs. I'm sober again. Finally. I'm like, I, I can't be gay. This hurts too much. I don't ever want to be gay. That's the most awful, miserable, horrible thing that ever happened to me. I don't ever want to be gay. And and, and I, I, I finally go to the, I go, okay, if Jesus Christ is real, I prayed about it, show him to me. And then, and then, and then so like, I, th I thought it was morally wrong for me to be gay. So finally, I said, okay, I want to be straight. And if I'm sinning for that, may God forgive me. And I started seeking Anyway, so stuff leads up. I'm no longer gay. I'm running out of time for this video. I want to tell you that things can be overcome. Christianity helped me overcome. In 2020, I realized I was Jesus Christ. I started playing bass. Went on the internet. Didn't think didn't think I was any good. And I wasn't. And I started playing. Metallica spots me. Comes rolling up on me one morning. James Hetfield did. I went, oh my God, these guys are watching me and, and they're interested in me. Not long later, the Christian singer Lauren Daigle spots me. Well, guess what? Now we're engaged. I'm not gay. 
And I'm running out of time, but Donald Trump is God, okay? You can overcome anything. Christianity is real. Jesus Christ is real. I've been through some serious shit in my life, and I've healed from it. You are not gay. You are good enough. You're smart. You're beautiful. You're strong. You're a man. You're a beautiful woman. You're not gay. Your dreams can come true. Donald Trump is God. Vote for Donald Trump. Watch my page. Watch all the stuff I say. It's real. Jesus Christ is real. It's a loving thing. God is real. I love you. I don't love everyone. I want to tell you you are. Your dreams, the things you want to be, you're afraid you're not, no bullshit. You are those things. You just don't believe it. The devil doesn't want you to believe that your dreams are true. God put those dreams in your heart to fulfill them. There's a reason you have dreams and that your dreams will call you into your destiny. Vote for Donald Trump. I'm Jesus Christ. Fuck you, Hamas. Burn in hell and die. Amen. Have a great day. God bless America. God bless good people of the world. God bless Israel. Amen.